friends. I'm here with author and entrepreneur Doretha White, who's got an amazing book coming out. Well, it's out right now. I can't wait to get my hands on a copy. And I just, from the look of it, it looks badass. Like it looks cool as hell. And I literally cannot wait to get my hands on a copy. Doretha, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? It's so nice to be with you today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm well, and I want to jump right into this. I want to give a little background. Um, Doretha used to be an educator, so I already know you're cool. Like, you're cool. <laughs> I know it. My brother and sister are teachers, and I'm like, hey. they were lame as kids, but they're cool now as an adult. I'm like, you guys are cool. Like, so I know you're cool. I know you're cool, and you took that coolness to the next level. Yes. So I want to know kind of how you made that transition from educator to becoming an author and a publisher and so much more. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, uh, yes, I, I will say I am very, very thankful and blessed. I've had an amazing sort of life journey. Um, I've been involved with a lot of cool stuff. And as you said, my, my background is in education. I started off as a sixth grade teacher and, you know, people who know about middle school, middle schoolers are crazy. So you have to be a little bit crazy <laughs> But when you are a middle school teacher, but that was my sort of my break into my career. Um, and then I became an elementary school teacher, kind of stayed in the elementary realm for a little bit. And I probably would have remained a teacher forever because I <laughs> loved being a teacher. There was nothing I disliked about being around kids. And I have a very sarcastic personality. So they got my jokes and things. So that was great. And then um, something happened. I, I worked on my master's degree because I was young, single, had nothing better to do, got the degree. And then the school where I was teaching, um, the principal literally offered me the assistant principal position. So that's how I transitioned into administration. I did that, got married, moved to uh, Georgia. And my husband and I both were in education. My husband was a high school teacher, basketball coach, and a mentorship uh, program founder. So we both were like on that on that path of just you know serving, loving families, helping kids, et cetera. But we were we both got a little bit disenchanted though with because creative people, we don't like to be in boxes. We like to be able to do the things that we feel in our heart and minds to do. And sometimes, you know, institutions want to kind of keep you on a certain path. That was hard for both of us. So we decided to start our own business. In 2003, we started Dream Big Youth Travel. And we started doing college tours, local tours to Morehouse, Spelman, Clark, Georgia Tech, Georgia State, UGA, et cetera. And then it just grew. And so we decided to go into that full time. So we've been full time in our college tour and field trip business since 2015. We did part time for 12 years. And then we've been doing it full time since 2015. And um, so then as that grew, you know, um, I started to spin off into some other things. I started to really think about some other things that were on my heart that I wanted to be able to accomplish. And in, in raising my own kids, there were just things that I thought, didn't I tell you that? Like, why don't you know that? What do you mean you don't know that? And that's kind of how the, my book idea came to pass. And I started writing, working. I've been working on this book for three years now. So I'm just so pleased that it's out and available for friends and family. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so your first book is about how to adult. Um, yes. And I feel like you kind of nailed it on the head. I feel like whether it's through, you know, just kind of things getting missed, passed down from generation to generation, or, you know, when family moves and, you know, things like this, it's just, there's always a little something that it's like, why do my parents know this, but I don't? Or why do my grandparents know this really easy tip for living just a successful day-to-day -day life, which really in the long term helps impact your lifetime. But we as a younger generation struggle with knowing these day-to-day -day tips. And I that is the one thing that really I was like super drawn when I was like reading about your book. I was like, this seems super interesting. And it's something I like, I'm like super passionate about this. I'm like, why is it I don't know these things, but everyone else seems to know it. So I'm like super interested in this book. I mean, I can't keep it like I keep saying it and it's true. Like it just seems so interesting to me. And I'm so excited that there is a book like this. Um, and you well, know, I, I just, there wasn't a book. Like, I was <laughs> like, why didn't somebody else think of this? I'm not a rocket scientist. What the world? You know, right. there, are, there are like smaller, you know, I, I found one that's for younger kids. Right. And it's all about money though, but money is just one part of living, you know, 
there's so much more to what it is to become a young adult. It's just taking care of yourself. And I hate to be crude, but the truth is, if you're on a subway, like I was in New York this weekend, you're on the subway, you're on the bus, you're on a plane, and people have body odor and you're thinking, but why though? Like, why don't you shower before you got on this? Thing? Right, or put deodorant on something, help yourself. The rest of us, you know, just how to care for oneself. What should you be doing to just take good care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, and all otherwise? You know, simple things. And so I think in schools and, and other books that I've seen that are similar, they do focus an awful lot on money, you know, how to save your money, how to invest your money, how to start investing when you're young. And that's one, that's only one part of your whole, whole life. Yeah. Yeah. And that is really so true. And, you know, you kind of touched on a super obvious one for me and you, which is hygiene, but what are some other kind of big lessons that they may not even necessarily have to be big, but like, it's like something's just missing. Like it's, right. it's there, but not. <laughs> Well, I want to show your, your, your fans and your followers. This is the cover. And it's so funny because we had this battle about whether I was going to put myself on the cover. I was like, oh, I really wanted to like highlight teens and young adults, young professionals. But I decided to put myself on the cover only because I want people to see I'm a mom. I'm a, I'm a normal, regular, regular schmegular wife and mom <laughs> and, you know, former teacher. And I love you guys. Like I have such a, a heart for young adults. I'm drawn. I am literally drawn to young adults. I'm in, I'm shopping, grocery shopping, shoe shopping, whatever. I will strike up a conversation with a young adult and it'll lead to something to do with like where they are in life and what's going on and what they need help with. And I just feel like if I can't, you know, have a conversation with every young adult that's out there, I can write these things down to help guide and it just it's like just a spark to get them on the right path. So yeah, so the book is divided into eight sections, okay? So as I said, the first section is all about personal hygiene and personal care. So self-care is the first <laughs> section. Um the second section is probably my favorite, personal adult responsibilities. Because, you know, there's all these things that we as adults have to just know and do and everything from your car insurance and apartment insurance, rental insurance, home insur insurance, if you decide to buy a house, just all the things that you are personally responsible for, whether you know it or not, you're responsible for those things. So that's the second area. The third area is health and wellness. That's a big, you know, just a big deal right now with people talking about what to do to take care of your physical body, exercise, eat right, drink water, reduce your stress, those kinds of things. There are tips in here for all of those. Then the, the next section is self-improvement because we all should be working on how to improve ourselves all the time. Travel, reading books, meeting new and different kinds of people. Those are the kinds of things that will make you, will cause you to improve yourself. And then financial, because money is important. You know, you can't really survive without it. <laughs> so there's a whole section on how to start a checking account, how to start a savings account, how to begin investing, just to get you going and get you started in the right direction financially. The next section is on professional and vocational because career is important. And I talk to so many young adults that say, you know, I really don't know what I want to do. I recently talked to a guy in Whole Foods <laughs> and he was like, well, I'm 21. I tried college. I hated it. And I'm not really sure what I want to do. And I'm like, you don't have to go to college if you don't want to. There are so many other trades and skills that don't require college. And so that's just, you know, one quick tip relationships is the seventh one and then personal safety how to keep yourself safe online and physically so you know it's a, i think the book is a good conversation starter because it's it can't be all it all you know be all end all there's just always new things to learn but it's a great conversation starter it's a great gift for parents to give their teens and young adults it's a great book in the library of your office because i talked to a lot of bosses that have you know, young people on their teams, they're like, well, they're really bright, but there's a lot of stuff they don't know about life. So it's a, it's a multi-purpose book. I want to ask you, what do you think caused this like gap in information being passed down? Is it like, what would you say it is? I, I would love to kind of pick your brain on that one. <laughs> you know, I think it's a lot of things. Um, 
I grew up in a household where, you know, I was a latchkey kid. My mom and dad both worked. But, you know, on the weekends, we spent a lot of time together, too. And um, I think that right now, um, it, it's tough. The economy is tough. And people find that they have to work two jobs or sometimes three jobs to keep everything flowing in the household. And they don't really have, you know, enough time for just downtime, family time. My family spent a lot of time in church. So I had a lot of my mom and dad's friends that were sort of my mentors. And I had this whole other, you know, just group of adults that I was around. And so even some things I didn't necessarily pick up from my mom or dad, my mom, my mom and dad's friends were always talking around me too. And so, you know, I think, uh, I think today, a lot of people, they don't live near their family. People live anywhere and everywhere. And that's great, you know, but the downside to that is you miss out on being around your grandparents, being around your aunties and your uncles so that, you know, you're just kind of growing up and all of a sudden you're 18 and you're just out there and there's a lot of information that you just didn't get. Um, I think that schools are missing the boat too. Because there are a lot of things that we learn in school. I'll be honest, as a kid, I was like, where am I going to ever learn these, need this Pythagorean theorem? I've never used the Pythagorean theorem one day in my adult life. <laughs> but, I did, right. but I did not learn about taxes in school. That would have been nice. Or entrepreneurship or money management or relationships. Those are just things that we feel like, well, that's somewhere else. No, our institutions that are here and built into our society, it would be great to have those, these really important essential things to be available to us in the schools as well. You're just saying so many things. And I feel like it's opening my mind, my heart. I'm like, oh, I, I just, I'm going to talk on this and I want to talk on that. But I, I have to ask, what would you say is your favorite part of the book or like the section that you're like, I went through it. So I know, and you absolutely should take big notes on this section. Well, that's so easy for me. And I'll tell you what my favorite section is. And it's, and so the, the 101, I don't know if you can see this well, but this is at the very back page. Lesson 101 is called be committed to being the best version of yourself. Be committed to being the best version of yourself. So I think that, you know, social media plays into this, of course, you know, we can't blame social media for everything, but I think sometimes we, there is a lot of pressure to look like this person or to talk like that person or think like that person. And really in life, you know, it's just like, you've got these amazing fingerprints, nobody else on planet earth before or after us will have your same exact fingerprints or the exact same design of the iris of your eyes. That's amazing. Even twins, I have twin cousins. They have the same, the same exact DNA. They're identical twins, but they are two separate individual people. We all are our own individual person. And to waste so much time trying to look like Kim Kardashian or talk <laughs> like, you know, or sing like Beyonce. I mean, it's like, be you. That's it. That's the message. Be you. And then every day, wake up and say, how can I be a better version of me than I was yesterday? That's it. That's the whole message. I have to ask. I mean, I'm a wife. I, I recently became a wife three years ago. So I'm still kind of working and navigating what it means to go from being single me to wife me and, um, you know, what that means. And I feel like just hearing how you talked about your life journey, it was so like awe inspiring. And I just love your energy. It's like, how do you balance it all? And like, how have you kind of just been able to do this all? You know, balance is, is um, unachievable. I, 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 you know, people talk about balance. I'm still trying to find it. I don't even think balance exists. I think you just, <laughs> I think you just figure it out on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, my husband and I have two businesses. We still do the college tours and educational field trips. I also publish for other people. I'm still a mom. I'm still a wife, but I think you just, you, you just, I, I like to use the analogy of in the circus Remember the circus and, and the, the guy had the spinning plates, right? Right. You get one plate spinning real, real good. And then you add the second plate and then you add the third. And before you know it, you got all your plates spinning. It's not going to always be pretty. It's not going to always be perfect. Um, they're going to be ups. They're going to be downs. But I think, the, I think the balance is in doing the things that you have to do and balancing that with the things that are in your heart to do, you know? 
um, because sometimes those two things are not one and the same. So for me, that's it. You know, a, as a wife, um, I will say that as a wife, I've evolved a lot. You know, when, you know, I, you grow up with certain expectations of what a husband is supposed to do and, and what you've been kind of conditioned to think that you're supposed to do. But that will change over time as well, because, you know, jobs fluctuate up and down and you're, you know, then you've got, as you, as you sort of go through this life journey with your spouse, you're going to lose parents, you know, you know, things in life will change and you just sort of have to be there for each other and, you know, provide that assistance and help so that everybody gets a little bit of what they want. So I do want to ask, um, what would you say? to your 20 year old self if you were buying this book for the first time oh man listen oh god what would i say to my 20 year old self oh, i was one of those people that i really didn't know what i wanted to do in life and i felt very um uneasy about you know even in terms of why i chose to go to college where i chose to go right because i had a first choice and I was nervous about going there because I felt like I'm not going to fit in, you know, I, I know I'm not a, a rich kid or I'm not this or that, you know, and I, I made a different choice based upon just fear, you know. And so the one thing that I would say to my 20 year old self is do away with fear. Fear is nothing but false evidence appearing real. It's false evidence. It's just false stuff. It's all the stuff that we have in our head about who we are and what we can do. And the real truth is you can do it all. You can do anything you want. You know, you just have to have the work ethic and the focus to be able to do whatever it is. There's no dream that's too big. There's no goal that's too high. You know, you can do anything you want. And so don't allow fear to handicap you. You know, um, I was even listening to a podcast this weekend and they was uh, t talking about fear and they were saying, you know, sometimes you just have to, to, to act more confident than you really feel. And so confidence is something that I think we think we have to feel confident. No, you can act confident until the feeling comes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so awesome. I think that's a real key thing because a lot of people will say, oh, I just, I don't know. Oh, I don't know about public speaking or I don't know about starting a business. Act confident and the feeling will come. Because the more you achieve, the more confident you will feel. And then it'll just, it's like, it's a snowball effect. One last question. And that is, what is one piece of advice you live by every day that your mom or dad told you, but you still swear by today? Oh my gosh. Okay. One piece of advice my mom or dad gave me, you know, my mom, um, my, my mom was something else. She was five, three, just a little, I'm, I'm five eight. My mom had these two tall girls and she's a little tiny lady, but she, she had a lot of chutzpah about her. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, she would, um, she would always point out things to me about myself that I didn't really see, you know? And I remember, um, I was something, something I was going for was probably like something I was doing at school. And she said, you know, it seems to me like everything you touch just turns to gold. And I was like, what? And so anytime I feel like, oh, I don't know if I can do this or this seems like too hard or too big, I literally hear her voice saying, girl, everything you touch turns to gold. Just keep going. You know, sometimes we, we feel like there's this deadline on what we're trying to achieve. And I, and I have this conversation with my son and my daughter often about timelines. We put pressure on ourselves about where we should be by 25 and where we should be by 28. And, where we should be by 33. There's no timeline. There's no timeline. You just keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep that confidence that everything you touch, it'll turn to gold. Just keep working for it. Dorito, how can people stay in touch with you, find your book and, you know, just get down with all your information? <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much. So listen, it's really easy to get in touch with me. So my email is really easy to remember. It's hello, Doretha at Gmail. <laughs> hello, D-O-R-E-T-H-A at Gmail. That's the best way to reach me. Search the, 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 um, the title, 
all the stuff your parents meant to teach you, but never got around to it. And that's the truth. Most, most parents understand there's a whole lot of stuff. Kids grow up too fast and we just didn't get a chance to cover it all. And the book is available on Amazon. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Doritha, so much for spending some time with me today. I really appreciate it. I need to clickety clack, get my way over to Amazon so I can get my book because really like when I was reading about you and I saw the book, I was like, she's cool. Like I have to talk to her. So I really am like super excited. We had this conversation and guys, if you love this conversation, you can stay up to date with me on all social media at it's me underscore Alyssa D. I've got all my exclusive interviews just like this one and so much more. And of course, if you love Star 94, you can download the free Odyssey app today. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y inside the app store. You can get all your favorite podcasts, streaming music stations, listen to all your favorite uh, artists, and so much more. Doretha, again, thank you so much for joining me today. And it really has been an honor to talk to you, even if it was just for five minutes. Oh, Alyssa, thank you so much. This has been awesome. I really appreciate it so much. Have a great day.